September is National Disaster Preparedness Month. And I don't know if you're like me, when I think of preparedness, I usually think of what I need to do at home, which of course is very important. But there are also things that our schools, our city does in getting ready for a disaster. And I have with me Dr. Tom Duncan from the Simpson County School Systems to give us a little information about what our schools do to prepare for a disaster and to protect our children. So welcome, Thank glad you. to have you, glad to have you. Um, when, how do y'all handle disaster preparation? Well, we, every school has a disaster plan. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it a crisis management plan, and it encompasses everything from tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, um, the shooter on campus situation. Uh, and every school has different strategies because every school campus layout is a little bit different. Right. Um, so obviously if we're evacuating in a fire it may be a little different on McGee High than it is over at McGee Elementary, but mm -hmm. typically there are protocols in place for every imaginable kind of situation. Do you, um, I always think of fire drills from mm -hmm. when we were in school and that type of thing, but now when you have like a tornado, which we're definitely have that around here, it seems like every other day, but um, where do you suggest that children go? Okay, How do you on, a, that? on a tornado drill, mm -hmm. obviously you want to protect yourself. And so it's just like in your own home. You want to get to that interior space that's mm -hmm. is well protected. So most of the time, our, our interior space is the hallway. Mm -hmm. And the kids are trained, and we practice this, that they go in the hall, they get up against the wall, and they know how to duck and cover. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the tornado drills are practiced, and that's the typically the safest location in the school building. Do you find the children cooperate during the <laughs> For the first five minutes, they're great, yes. And then, and then I'd I be get the same restless. way. I'm afraid I would no. be the same way. I would be the same no, way. No, actually, we, we practice that enough, and they know that they realize the importance of that. So, yes, they, they, they typically do. Do you use a type of bell system? What do you do in case electricity shuts down and you know have no PA system? Well, what does the teacher do? If the, if the electricity is down, then typically we have walkie talkies on every hallway, and oh. then that particular teacher is responsible for running up and down the mm -hmm. hall and making sure everybody knows. And mm -hmm. typically if you step outside and start yelling, hey, tornado drill, everybody mm -hmm. get, get your positions, you know, they'll, they'll know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then obviously in a fire drill, you would holler fire drill, mm -hmm. um, you know, listen, you, you know, if you're in a building that's supposed to evacuate, then you know where to go. Well, I, I, I admire the schools and having those plans because you got to have them. You've got to have them. One thing that was has been interesting to me as I listen to maybe the weather reports and the weather gets bad and all of a sudden I'll look outside and it'll be lightning and thunder and it's time to get out of school. What is a parent to do if it's pickup time, let's say, for your child? Sure. And, and that's been a point of contention with some parents and the schools because we don't want to release a child, obviously, if it's a lightning storm going on right at the time of dismissal. Wow, and so I mean. we have held school and held students in, in buildings until it subsided, let up a little bit. Um, and obviously we have parents that show up early and say, I want to get my kid out of school, and, that, and that's okay. But you have to think about it. What is the safest place for them to be? Mm -hmm indoors in a protected area and so our first priority is to protect those kids and so if we keep them in it's for safety reasons. Well I would think too it would almost turn into bedlam. If all these people want to come early they're supposed to be a storm at one o'clock and yeah. so they come at eleven o'clock. I don't see how you can handle all that. Well we do but then you know we have most parents realize that we're going to take care of their child uh, and that they don't show up. So the few that do, we can we can handle. That. You probably know that they're going to be anyway. Uh, how <laughs> how do you let parents know that there's going to be early dismissal? Uh, we have the AIM call system, mm -hmm. and parents identify to us their primary phone number, and we can phone or text them. You know, um, in pending bad weather, school dismiss at two o'clock, mm -hmm. or you know when we had all the flooding right. in that system, right. and school's going to be delayed, and we get it out to the the news media as well mm -hmm. uh, as to what that schedule is going to be. But now, you know, with cell phones these days, and most parents want the messages on cell phones, it's very important, parents, to please make sure we have your current cell phone number. <laughs> that's right, not at once. Please, <laughs> that's a little plug there, uh, because if you know, obviously, if, 
we don't have your current cell phone number, you're not going to get that call. Right. And, um, so it's almost like, don't blame me. Well, you know? <laughs> you know, we should have the current cell phone number, but we don't know when parents swap cell phone numbers and that kind of stuff. So, you know, they, they need to keep us informed. So and, you know, they may not phone. think about it. They yeah, may not sure. think about the fact that they need to be sure that is that their child's yeah. number or their parent's number is on record. That's right. That That's, a, that's, that's really a good important. thing to remember. Um, we talked about different places to go for bad weather, for fire, but I don't, heaven forbid that we should ever deal with a school shooting, and I hope we will not, but how do you handle a school shooting? Well, you know, with the rash of shootings mm -hmm. that have been nationwide, they've had some very specific training that we've attended, and I don't know if you'll notice sometimes when you pass our campus, there are numbers in the windows now and things like that, so we can identify rooms from the exterior um, but the protocol for a school shooter is just like any intruder on campus uh, lock it down mm -hmm. and so the teachers are when told, you say lock it down what does that mean that means we lock the school doors we lock the classroom doors and the teachers are, are not supposed to let anybody in that can't clearly identify themselves would do our rooms lock I, I know that sounds funny, but no. I, so we have you know. we have some very old buildings, uh, and we, <laughs> have, I, and we have some that don't lock. Mm -hmm. uh, to be quite frank with you, but uh, most of the newer buildings uh, do can lock from the inside, uh, and obviously we have trained teachers how to barricade their door uh -huh. in the ones that mm -hmm. don't have the locking mechanism. Now, those are actually a little few and far between now, but there are also mm -hmm. hallways that still don't have locking doors. Well, you know. We didn't have a bond issue to pass. <laughs> there you go. And that's so you know we didn't get all locked yeah. doors. So we just to pay for what we get, don't we? But on that, um, and the reason I'm asking about locking, it's interesting to me. Can a child go into the room and lock the teacher out? How does that door lock on a door that is lockable? You know, is it like in my house or something? It's just a flip. Are those oh. flip locks, or do they have to have a key, or Your do kids you, do me something I know that's not a fair question, really, because that's, that's, that's <laughs> really a technical um, one. No, I think some of them do have the flip locks, but, t you know, teachers, like everybody at McGee High in the new building, mm -hmm. their keys will unlock all those doors, and we have some a master key that'll open everything. So, they will lock up know, in there. Students aren't going to lock the teacher out. And it may be keyed both ways. I'm not sure. I just but wonder. But I'll check that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really just me. I, I mean, that's really not something. It's just um, I've, I've had had it on my mind so much because I was so aware of even things within my home and um, about locking. And it got me to thinking about the school and the children and the teachers, their safety and how you, how you actually handled, yeah. you know, a locking situation. With this being preparedness, month, September. I think right now that Dr. Tom has already given you one of the number one things. Be sure you have the correct cell number at the school. There's not there's many things you as a parent, as a grandparent, um, can do to protect your child while they are at school. That's just one small thing, being sure that they have the correct number. They're going to take care of you. I'm going to tell you, they've got their plans done because all of it's mandated, <laughs> but well, they want to, too. And we do. We practice drills. Um, I, we had a total evacuation of both mm -hmm. campuses at McGee High and McGee Middle recently on a fire plan mm -hmm. on October the 16th at 1016. So on 1016 at 1016 in the morning, <laughs> we're participating in the Great American Shakeout, uh, and that's an earthquake drill. So really? A little different, but, you know, we are in a fault zone we apparently are. and we need to practice. You know a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that we are on one. How are you going to do uh, that? How do you do a... Well again there, there are protocols and obviously you pretend like right. oh, this building has been compromised so mm -hmm. we have to evacuate this building. Mm -hmm. uh, we have injuries here so we're going to have a response team here because earthquakes typically don't devastate an entire campus. They right. just shake, rattle and roll mm -hmm. and most of the kids you know drop, cover, and hold and hold on, get under something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then we will designate certain buildings to say, oh, you got hit really bad, you got to evacuate and that kind of thing. Okay, so when that ha happens, I'm not over the 16th, at 1016, <laughs> right, do not worry. The children are not really in it, are not leaving McGee yeah, it's, or it's whichever a, school. It's a drill. It's Is this countywide? Yes, ma'am. Countywide. County we'll be looking Actually, for that. Actually, I think it's statewide. They're gonna oh, really? That. Well, that's interesting. That'll be interesting <laughs> to follow. I'm glad you told me that. I hope again that you will be prepared. I think the Girl Scouts have a great motto, and I think it's one that applies to us as well as to the schools, but as much as anything, it applies to 
the family, the individual to be prepared. Our school is prepared and I hope that you will be.